Hi and welcome to the Homeopathy Health Show. I'm Atik Ahmad Bharti, a fourth generation homeopath with over 25 years of professional experience and practice in this field of healing. The Homeopathy Health Show is the online voice of homeopathy around the world, promoting and raising awareness of this truly unique system of healing, which is suitable for all ages, young and old. Every week I invite guests from the world of homeopathy to come and share their experiences, their work, offer insights and essentially talk all things homeopathy. Why not visit www.liketreatslike.co.uk and click on the radio and podcast button to listen to the latest episodes. So let's begin today's show here on UK Health Radio, the world's number one talk health radio. Hi and welcome to episode 59 of the Homeopathy Health Podcast here on UK Health Radio and I'm your host Atik Ahmad Bhatti. Well firstly I do hope you're well and I hope and pray it continues to be that way. Now today's episode is part two of a three-part special focusing upon homeopathic detox therapy and human chemistry, a method of treatment within homeopathy created by Ton Janssen, a world-renowned homeopath from the Netherlands. In today's episode, Roger Savage returns to talk about the method and share his knowledge and insights in practice. And this will be followed by part three next week, where I'll have the honour to talk to Ton Janssen himself, who will share his thought process and research that led him to create this method or protocol of treatment with amazing results, I might add. Now, part one of this three-part special was featured on episode 42 of the Homeopathy Health podcast, and you can find this online on all major podcast platforms and on my YouTube channel. Just click the link in my bio on Instagram for the podcast links. My Insta is at like underscore treats like and features a host of special exclusives including messages from my guests and reels on upcoming podcasts. Please do help me by supporting homeopathy on radio and podcast by subscribing to the Homeopathy Health Podcast and to my official Instagram. And without further ado, let's now move to part two of this three-part special, and I welcome my returning guest, Roger Savage. I'm delighted to welcome Roger Savage back to the Homeopathy Health Show. Now, you will remember a few weeks ago, Roger was on the show, and we spoke all things homeopathy and his journey to homeopathy experiences, and it was delightful, and I'm equally delighted to welcome Roger back. So, Roger, welcome back to the Homeopathy Health Show. And nice surprise that you've asked me. You you must have thought it went well the first time. <laughs> it was it was it was lovely, Roger. It was lovely, and it's just as lovely to have you back. So thank you no, very thank much. Thank you, thank you. So what should we talk about today, Atika? Well, in the last podcast, we spoke about uh, human uh, chemistry method, the detox mm. method, and uh, we spoke about Ton Jensen, who is actually mm. coming on the show with your good self. Yeah, very, that's very right. soon. Mm. So it would be nice for for those who are unaware of what human chemistry is for mm. you to perhaps explain that method or that protocol, why it's important, um, especially with you know the the complex or complicated cases that sometimes we're presented with as homeopaths, where there's perhaps different layers of toxicity, which can prevent certainly um, healing taking place. That's right. So Ton came to this method because he observed in his early cases that either what we call the well-indicated remedy didn't seem to work as he was expecting, or a person got better the improvement didn't last, which then led him to look at Hahnemann's paragraph. Now, I'm not good at remembering paragraph numbers, but I think it's number three, which says that we need to look at the obstacles to cure. So human chemistry is a way of using remedies to clear obstacles to cure. Hmm. Now, now, in my opinion, although not necessarily Tons, if 
somebody comes to me who has clear-cut symptoms, obviously good vitality, and when we've looked over their history, they have hardly had a vaccine, can't remember any antibiotics, have certainly had no steroids, and among the women, for various reasons, have never had a contraceptive. I would be expecting that the single remedy classical approach will work just fine. And I would only think otherwise if at some point there was an unexpected failure to progress to full recovery. Ton won't necessarily agree with me because that person may have a clean history, but their parents may not have been so clean. Ton also looks carefully at the circumstances around conception and whatever we can get of the parental history before conception. Mm -hmm. The pathway may not be so clear there. And you know that old saying, the sins of the fathers are visited upon the children. That's from the Bible. In homeopathy, that means problems in the parents or grandparents or earlier may be echoing down to us either as an inherited definable disease or else a miasm. So for Ton, we sometimes may need this approach of clearing the blocks, clearing the toxins. Now, I put forward there a kind of ideal patient. How many people do we have who have so little medical intervention and other toxins in their history very few oh and i should have said that my almost well patient has never had any surgery or other interventions and also never taken a pleasure drug how many people have a life that clean hmm. not many and yet they still may have good vitality a strong vital force, and their remedy picture may still be clear, and we may still say, look, I'm going to give you a single remedy. I can see the image clearly. It's showing on the mental level, the emotional level, the physical level, and in many cases, everything will be fine. And as every classical practitioner will attest, they will get wonderful successes that way. But what do we do if we go to the other extreme? And Ton and I and others now meet people who, when they fill in what we call the timeline form, may show in a life of 40, 50 years, 10 or 12 courses of steroid treatment, 20 or 30 courses of antibiotics, 25, 30 years of contraception, may also have had various pleasure drugs, have had several hospitalizations, so that's surgical shocks, um, possibly had two blood transfusions, and have a very full history of vaccination, both whatever was normal for their age group in childhood and teens, but also because they've traveled a lot, they've had lots of travel backs. Now, we know that when somebody has that much in the history, it is not easy to see the clear thread of a single remedy running through their history. Because their vital force has almost certainly been compromised by this extensive history of medication and toxicity. Even if we can see clues to a whole person remedy to treat their whole story, there will almost certainly be blocks to that remedy working. And this is what Ton found observing 
treating, comparing results over 10 or 15 years early in his practice. And then slowly, gradually over these 30, 35 years, he's worked out what is most likely to be a problem, a block to progress, working down a scale to, to things that might be a problem, but we'll wait and see. Hmm. So we call it the higher, well, hierarchy of toxins, if you like. And I've also worked out a hierarchy of vitality, uh, levels of health, um, a little bit similar to how George Vitulkas produced one, so that we can gauge how strong a person is, how likely they are to respond clearly to classical prescribing. Now, one thing I really do like always to emphasize is that in human chemistry, we do not criticize any other practitioner or any other method. You know that homeopathy has been so full of people criticizing each other. This mm. is unhealthy. We do not do it. Everybody has something to offer. And once somebody's toxins and blocks to cure have been cleared by hom by human chemistry, we are then what you can call classical prescribers. We are likely to see an image of a clear single remedy and give it. So that in short is what human chemistry is about. But Tom went further. He then started to look at what other kinds of remedies could be really helpful in reaching people's problems? And at the same time, he thought, I can sit with him and tell him how I feel, but I may have health problems that I'm not aware of. Now, I know that Hahnemann said, it is not our business to investigate the interiors of man. That's the English translation. We treat what we see, but we can go further than that. And Ton has found that it is really useful to have in front of us the results of a full panel blood test. Now, yes, in homeopathy, we do not treat named diseases. But if somebody complains of persistent tiredness and just can't really explain why, it is useful in a test to see if they have high lead content or high aluminium or um, their white blood count is too high. We, we can see if their red count is low by checking under their eyelid. But these are just examples. And are they tired perhaps because the thyroid function is not right or the pituitary isn't firing the thyroid adequately? And then so we can look at their hormones. And he came to realize that we could make very useful remedies out of hormones and neurotransmitters. So a big part of human chemistry teaching is introducing people to new categories of remedies. Now, of course, I think there is an argument. Have we not got enough remedies? Well, Yes, but have we necessarily got the remedy our patient needs? And it is really useful to have accessible a new range of remedies that we don't use in every case, but will often use. Which then brings us that in human chemistry, we can use nosodes, which is remedies of unhealthy organs or from diseases and sarcodes which is remedies from healthy organs or healthy um, body elements like we may choose to give pineal gland for example because if we do that we are giving in potency a positive signal to the patient system if for example the pineal is low 
or the pituitary is clearly not not working right we can give anterior pituitary posterior pituitary or whole pituitary pituitary we can check um which one by checking in the materia medica or by looking in that blood test and seeing what results show so it teaches us not to panic when we see a really complicated history in front of us we have navigation pathways so that's quite a long introductory speech um was it clear is there anything you'd like to ask to make anything clearer it sounds really fascinating but also very um very sensible to be honest with you very sensible indeed and it's uh often as uh, within homeopathy uh the miasmatic approach is mm. the one that one would sort of consider when a patient perhaps isn't responding or even um, just as part of the case looking back at the history but this adds this extra layer and i think we've all been in a situation now and again where a patient come what may is just not responding to an indicated remedy yeah. even if that remedy comes up again and again and even if you try you know different potencies let's say because potency does matter but um so I, I wanted to ask you about um at the beginning of this explaining this method the mm. human chemistry method you mentioned about uh that, that uh, ton identified some very common uh blockages as such mm. that would prevent a person responding so does one of those blockages uh, include antibiotics the the overuse of antibiotics yeah. absolutely absolutely it does so if a patient knows which ones they've had or in rare cases have had just one in our prescription we would include a potency of that antibiotic but in most cases people have had multiple so we use what we call poly antibiotic mm. and in his method he gives ascending potencies of let's call them the balancing remedies let's not overuse this word detox it's balancing so we either want to encourage the body to eliminate its undesirables its toxins or to boost its grasp on the positives so antibiotics can indeed um be a nuisance because we only have to look at the orthodox sources and see the list of side effects of all drugs now medics say and correctly it is a balance of options every medical treatment has its downside they acknowledge it it's is the gain going to be greater than the risks you know it's like saying with an operation there's a 5% a 7% risk of a serious outcome including death but if you don't have the operation there's a 100% chance of a death fairly soon so you say mm. okay fine so it's sometimes referred to isn't it as a as a necessary evil almost. that's right that's right <laughs> but by our methods suppose somebody must be on a drug because they have an outright deficiency if we give a potency for example a 12c of that drug the same day as they are given the drug it helps the body to get the benefit of the drug and minimize the side effects and also should it ever be possible it would help the person to be able to come off such a drug that's the tautopathic approach isn't it uh, yes that portion is yes mm. but it really can be tremendously helpful mm. i think what we're finding uh, nowadays is very much except for a few places so i'll give you an example <clears throat> in india as you very well know mm. homeopathy is just common it's common knowledge yeah. people there's homeopathic stores everywhere there's homeopathic doc very skilled homeopathic doctors mm. 
everywhere around the corner literally so mm. it's uh it's part of sort of uh, you could say it's just part of culture as well it's like oh you're sick okay go to the homeopathic store and buy this and this or mm. um go to doctor such and such just mm. on this road and that road and mm. it's just there mm. i was speaking to uh jock Gadei Khathiasa from uh, Bali, who runs the Tirta Usada clinic, and he told me that in Bali, 95% of the population grow up with natural medicine. Oh, wonderful. So they're, they're home prescribers. It's not, it's not, it's a no brainer, literally, for them. So, wonderful. You know, they, it's not, oh my God, panic, you're sick. It's just like, okay, you got this today, let's sort this out. You got that today, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, but very much in the West, we're very, um used to uh, medicine pharmaceutical drugs as such and that's the majority of cases and the toxicity for 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 people is is quite um it, it's layered i mean i used that word earlier but mm. there's so many different layers and, and peeling right. away the layers of an onion it that's takes right. time doesn't it it's it's not yeah. a quick fix because you're blocking so many different pathways and and it we know that as a fact that sometimes you're on a, a medicine and the GP or the consultant will say, okay, this has this side effect, so you need to take such and such drug mm. to alleviate those side effects. Mm. And it goes round in circles. Yes. So that's that's where, you know, it's even if somebody perhaps doesn't want to go down the route of homeopathy, but this human chemistry method at least will detox and clean the gutters, literally, you know. To say yeah, right, it, yeah, it, it'll see. bring it'll bring some balance. Hmm. Yes, that's right. Well, people have to want that. They have to come to us because they want to make some change. Even I've been to lots of people. Nothing's worked. You're my last hope. Now one always holds one's breath at that. They don't call you Obi Wan Kenobi. I hope. Uh, no, no, nobody <laughs> ever has. No, okay. but you're my last hope. Yeah. I think, well, no, I'm not. And when they say I've tried everything, I think, well, no, you haven't. But you've tried everything you could think of. Now, one thing Tom you'll find when he inter interviews is very keen on is that we don't try things. We give them or take them. Hmm. We apply focused, positive thinking to our prescriptions. Because try suggests something tentative. And the underside of that is, well, you can take it. I'm not sure it'll do anything. And that itself will set the wrong atmosphere. So we approach positively to our patients. And one other aspect I forgot to mention at the beginning that led him to develop the human chemistry method mm -hmm. is that even if people did recover, it was very slow. And there could be quite a lot of upheaval on the way hmm. by his method there is minimal upheaval what we call aggravation and it is much faster i also didn't mention something human chemistry isn't just a matter of giving remedies in potency like Pasteur, Tom says we need to cultivate a healthy terrain, which means a good lifestyle, a healthy diet. So we don't say nothing else matters, carry on with everything, just take my remedy. He said, no, no, at the very least, that will perpetuate the problem you've come with. And what I'm doing probably won't work. We must have good, fresh food on whatever dietary regime we choose. Um, many people eat all kinds of food. Many are vegetarian. Some are vegan. That's fine. All of them. But be sure the food is good quality, organic if possible, and a right balance. So we need... and. Uh, to have a healthy uh, background and then remembering Hahnemann would talk about maintaining causes like living in a damp uh, um, dark 
basement will be a maintaining cause. And I did once almost verify that sleeping for a few nights in a damp room. I got terribly wheezy. It mm. went off when I found where the storage heater was. So it, H Hahnemann is exactly right. Now, whether we can quite tell our patients to move house is a point for discussion, but we can at least say, look, your circumstances need to be conducive to recovery and then health. Do you know that saying, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. So if we do so changes, we shall simply either not improve or will revert, relapse. So for Ton, this is part of uh, a whole health approach. So good diet, short term supplementation where it's needed. Um, exercise because in english his email address is called health in movement health through movement mm. so he will not expect to cure somebody who never bothers to get up out of the chair interesting so it, it, it's a totality i i like um you know, as you just mentioned that, I, I like that email address, but I know yours is like mine. Mine is health at, and so is yours, health at. Yeah. Nice that, you know, because that's what it is. That's actually what it is. It's not yes. uh, Roger at or a tea cat. It's, it's health at. Yes. Well, the business address is, yes, I have a Roger at for personal purposes. But yes, it's saying what we're <clears throat> meaning to do. And it's not just the potency remedy and carry on regardless. It's homeopathy in a context. I and think that's... Hear Tom talking about that. He won't use that wording. That's my wording, but it's, it's a, the concept he will put forth. You know what you've said is so, so important nowadays. I, I, I tell you something interesting, and without mentioning any brands, etc., but recently there was um, a video circulating, and it show, and some pictures actually as well, of a burger that was purchased about 30 odd years ago hmm. and it was kept safe that burger and a picture was taken recently last year i believe and it had need not decomposed at all so you know you are what you eat i mean that just is baffling and mind-boggling that what could be in there that is actually pure because nothing has decomposed at all it's as it was that's freakishly scary, isn't it? You know, for many aspects of the food industry or for space feeding, they would say that's absolutely ideal. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, nowadays, of course, the food would have had been radiated, so it mm. would last for a long time. Yes, who can say? Who can say what was in that thing? But it wouldn't be food. Now, one of the big things Ton emphasizes is that most of us have a diet high in carbohydrate which of course includes sugar and low in oils and fats so he's dead against the concept of the low fat diet uh, as part of the attempt to be slim that mm. that's not the attitude in in a recent um talk he said the brain is fed by oils and fats not carbohydrates mm. now we don't therefore mean frying oil that's already gone past the flashpoint and spitting round the the kitchen we mean pure raw virgin cold pressed oils which are nourishing and that is a balance that most people haven't got right in his experience so if we are high in carbohydrate we will be high in acidity that's, we're not you know, nourishing that's, our system yeah. as we need to mm. that's absolutely true the, 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 the what like i said we are what we eat and nowadays it's uh it's very easy to buy everything processed it's easy for to order everything online and, and get it delivered to your door and but diet and nutrition are so so important they're mm. critical and you mentioned some really um valid points which include of course like we've said diet nutrition but also exercise just going yeah. out for a walk just yeah. 
That's right. You know, as as cheesy as it as it may sound, and certainly it's not cheesy if you really reflect on this. Go out and be amongst nature. You know, literally sit in a park on a bench and just enjoy. Yeah, just the bird songs and you know the distant sound of people, perhaps, or just look at the grass and the trees. And like I said, you know, nowadays perhaps if you say that, it's like somebody would probably be reply, "Are you okay? Is something wrong with you?" But de-stressing yeah. and cal- un- un- calming. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. I read a very good description somewhere. Stress is good for us. Strain is not. Mm. So stress is, for example, flexing the biceps. But strain is lifting something that's too heavy or pulling something that's too resistant. Mm. Um, Working long hours, too much traveling, um, going past the point where we are getting signals saying stop. That is strain. Stress is having challenges. Because if we don't have any positive stress, uh, we will vegetate, lo- lo- lose our goals, lose our direction. Mm. So all of that is part of the path of health. Clearly it is. Yes. So tell me, Roger, um, it's fascinating and um, actually very much looking forward to Ton joining us uh, yes. in a few weeks' time. But with your experience, your wealth of knowledge, actually, and wealth of experience, and using human chemistry for the listeners, how have the results been? I mean, how exciting are they? And and, and how are patients responding? Is it, uh, does it take several months, perhaps, to get a complete detox if someone has uh, had a lifestyle of perhaps poor nutrition, diet, and, and many anti courses of antibiotics and, and other drugs? It can take several months for bringing balance again. Again, I'm going to avoid um, detox. Yes, it can do. Now, if somebody has that basic good vitality, after a few weeks, after four weeks, if one has a, a checkup, oh, I do feel much better. Good. Yes, it can happen. Or eight weeks, certainly. But if people have had a lot of interventions let's call it of all sorts and heavy duty ones maybe it'll be 16 weeks i don't mean 16 weeks less two days before they see any improvement but before there is a really significant change Hmm. now in our human chemistry prescription this is to give a sort of cross-section average we will open the treatment with a miasmatic remedy Yes, we then have to identify which miasm is dominant. It might be the nosode, or it might be a remedy that is miasmatic, according to what aspect is dominant now. And then, if they've had those famous multiple courses of antibiotics, that will be one of the courses. If they've had uh, steroids, that will be another. Hmm. And part of most prescriptions is what we call poly bowel plus which is an aggregation of bowel nosodes and sarcodes because most people have gut permeability i'll take out the word most so many do of the patients we see we're not speaking of those who are never ill the ones we come across and it's very important to get that gut, that in whole intestinal complex working well. Because it often isn't. It may be storing stuff there for years, mm. which is going to spoil our whole system. And if we repair that, so antibiotic steroids, polybowel, and then we need to select a remedy for the whole person, or what Jeremy Sher would say, the greatest totality we can see at that time. We don't torment ourselves. Is this the remedy that should last them their whole life and they should have had from the beginning? We don't know that usually. We can't see it. But we see now what is dominant now. Oh, I feel so cramped. I feel so restricted. Ah, all right. So the remedy might, for example be a copper remedy that's just an example 
we need to give something that matches them. So as he would say, the opening miasmatic remedy starts to prepare the body for recovering. It's the first bit of the cleanup. Then we run those courses, which if we use the typical eight week prescription, we do for twice a week. Typically two weeks at 30 C, two weeks at 200, two weeks at M, two weeks at 10 M. Again, let's avoid the word protocol. It can't be reduced to a series of formulae, but it's often like that. Hmm. There will be variations, absolutely, always checked individually, but that kind of thing. And yes, I often make a joke. I say to a patient, that was the easy bit. I know what I'm giving you to start the balancing. We've now got to find the remedy for you now. Tell me about this. Tell me about that. Oh, I see. Thank you. Yes. And another thing Ton has done is to investigate not only neurotransmitters and hormones, but widely in the plant kingdom. So he's produced a very large book. A com it's a compact materia medica of a lot of plant remedies. Hmm. many of which I had never heard of. And so that again brings us into thinking of plants in their families. Jans Colton taught us to think of the minerals in their columns and their rows. Of course, he has gone on to do plants in the same way. Ton's method um, is working in a similar way. And so we don't just limit ourselves to the few remedies that always show at the top in the repertory. The repertory will always show the ones with the most number of entries. But have they got the key symptom of that person? Maybe not. So we always have to expand our consciousness and our awareness and not just think on the same trackway. That's a very important point, isn't it? Because like you've said, when you do look and sometimes the same remedies, the polycrests, for example, or, mm. and, and, okay, maybe in certain cases, because to, to assist the patient at that time, you could give that because sometimes the, the way that most people are used to, certainly in the West, is that if you have a headache, you take a paracetamol, for example, mm. or painkiller, let's say, and you know, job done, you get on with your life. Mm. So quick fixes, and the, yes. people have very little time to wait. So when you do say, it's going to take a few weeks to get you 100%, it's like, I haven't got time, I've got to go here, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. So that's one approach, certainly, that you can treat the acute, let's say, or the presenting complaint, certainly, but then at the same time, work on yeah. in, in the background as well. Because it's also I mean, the positive I see from all of this is it's an educational um, <clears throat> opportunity for the patient as well to learn about themselves, about their body and what's going on with the remedies and how they're yeah. cleansing out. And, and that's really a positive, isn't it? Indeed. And there's a gratifying number of patients who are like that. I do so often think of Kent's description of patients arranged around us in three rows or circles. The inner circle are really keen really dedicated to homeopathy and health, and maybe even then become practitioners. The next row really like it, use it whenever they can, but if they're, if they're in a tight corner, they'll use other methods, including orthodoxy. Mm. And the people in the third row, um, yeah, homeopathy is quite interesting. Of course, everyone knows for the real stuff, you have to go to the doctor, but the homeopath helps me with this or that. Um, of course, there is a fourth row of those who occasionally have something but don't take it that seriously. But we get a gratifying number in the first row and a pretty gratifying number in the second row. So we we get good, um, good feedback. And of course, even as human chemistry prescribers, if you say to me, look, I, most days I have a headache and some days it's awful. I will also say, give me the exact symptoms of your headache. Well, when you get a headache, take this as your acute remedy. Now, with my longer term prescribing, I will be hoping that the headaches will reduce in intensity 
and frequency and duration. But we must address your immediate problem. I was going to say, well, thank you very much. Your, your program is interesting, but I can't get on with life with these headaches. Mm. And I said, well, look, take the paracetamol if you want, but if you do, a little while later, take it in potency. But I want to see if we can get you out of this pattern without needing to do that. Mm. Sometimes we need, all right? But we do our best to avoid. I think that's a very sensible way of of actually dealing with with disease um, and and health conditions because we have to be so realistic nowadays. And there are certain expectations, of course, from somebody who's a patient who's unwell and and they want certain things to happen perhaps quite quickly. And it's not always possible, but. Um, we have to be, we're, homeopathy is an art and we have to be creative we're individually. Right. We just have to, we just have to be sensible and creative. That's, That's what right. it is, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. at the end of the day, again, I say, and I've said this many, many times, it doesn't matter what pro method or, or, or system you use, whatever it is, if you've got a toolbox of multiple systems or, or methods, fantastic. But just remember, at the end of the day, our greatest goal, like Hahnemann said, is to look after the patient so that their health is restored. And that's the goal. How we get there as artists, as homeopathic artists, is, 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 our, own, um, is, is our own way and, and method and what we've learned and what we take interest in. But that's the beauty of homeopathy, isn't it? Yeah. Everyone's an artist. Everyone will paint a beautiful portrait. Yes, and we have to let the patient paint that portrait. Even what they say to us seems odd or their behavior is strange. Mm. We have to try to get them to convey to us what's going on and not make any assumptions. And if we're going to challenge them in any way, be very, very careful how we do it. Because of that warning, when we treat somebody, we can all too easily re-traumatize them. Mm. There we have to say, can you just share with me what's going on? I, you know, what are you feeling? And if I'm going to ask a leading question, which as you know, as homeopaths, we should not, I actually tell them in advance, I want to ask you a leading question, but don't be led. Mm. And sometimes, oh gosh, I never thought to tell you that. Yes, you're right. Okay. And if they say, I don't think so. I said, okay, fine. No, it's not that. It just saves waiting too long and not getting clarity, but I always flag it if I'm going to do it. It's, uh, again, your approach is, is very interesting because I, I'm also very, I, I, use, I use a very open approach. So every patient is different. We cannot have a checklist in front of us mm -hmm. and tick boxes. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, let the patient patient feel comfortable. Let them express themselves and just listen to them. Don't worry about the box and 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 the case notes and and looking at finding a similimum. You will, that it should pop into your head eventually. Anyhow, mm -hmm. just observe the patient. Observation, of course, the compassion that goes with it. Having that conversation can sometimes bring out and fulfill the patient themselves. Can present you with the remedy by the end of the yes. the conversation. Yes, you know. Yes, and and that's beautiful, and, and it yes. it also releases them. There's so much change that can happen in a consultation because of the fact they've just got it off their chest, whatever it is. You know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm. That's true. And you said, what about people's recovery? Well, many make really good progress within those four, eight, certainly sixteen weeks. Yes, of course, we all of us have a few where that goal is elusive. Let, As Jeremy Scher says, let us have honesty in homeopathic teaching. Yes, we do have some patients who puzzle us and they puzzle themselves, but bless them, they stick with us and slowly, gradually, but they can, and then there can be one day, oh, I know it's that. Or they realize, oh, yes. Um, 
I, I always, um, I'm sure this is something you've done as well, Roger, many, many, many times. Um, sometimes, um, a patient, a case, a patient is presented and the, you can't seem to, you ask certain questions and they say, oh, no, no, that's never happened or this hasn't happened. And then after a few days or even a few hours, they called back and they said, oh, yes, it did. You're right. It did happen. I had a thought and, and that's, <clears throat> And that's really important as well to give the patient time. Sometimes if you can't prescribe on the spot, that's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. As long as the patient is aware. Yeah. You, like I said, again, I'll say we have to be, every patient is different and we have to be methodical and sensible. Mm, absolutely. You know? absolutely. It's, uh, it's been wonderful uh, talking to you. There's so much more that I want to ask you, but uh I think you're going to certainly be back more than a third or a fourth time when I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> well, that'll be nice. That'll be nice. I, I hope it's been interesting. It's good to me to think over what am I doing and where has it come from? And uh, you've made some good comments and questions. I think we've covered quite a lot in our discussion. And thank you very much, Atik, for offering this opportunity. Oh, it's always an honour to have you, Roger. You're a very good friend of mine now. Uh, with it, I have the great respect for you. I think what you've done and what you continue to do is is inspiring for so many people and may it long, long continue. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that was the wonderful Roger Savage joining me for part two of this three-part special. And as I said at the start of the podcast, I'm absolutely honoured to be welcoming Ton Janssen to next week's episode, which is episode 60 and also part three of the three-part special focusing on homeopathic detox therapy and human chemistry. I must say here that it's such a delight to speak to um, Roger. It's uh, such a, a wonderful soul indeed, and an amazing practitioner, truly uh, inspiring. I've thoroughly enjoyed this episode, I must say, and I very much look forward to welcoming Roger back so that we can have many more episodes with him and he can share his insights and experiences so until next week uh, stay safe and take care i do hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of the homeopathy health show please do support the show by clicking follow on my socials remember the more exposure the podcast receives the better for homeopathy around the world you can find me on instagram by searching for at like underscore treats like and on both Facebook and TikTok by searching for at Like Treats Like. So let's promote the voice of homeopathy on radio and podcast around the world together. Don't forget to visit me online at www.liketreatslike.co.uk and click on the radio and podcast tab. Here you'll be able to see all the guests that have joined me on the show so far. And of course, you can stream on demand the latest episode to your mobile, tablet or PC. Until next time, stay safe and take care.